You know those things you look back at and think about how unlikely it was that they ever happened? Heroes 3 is one of those things for me. My mum bought it for my sister for Christmas, finding it in the budget gaming section of a Trago Mills store. The only reason she chose it was because it had dragons on the cover, and my sister loved dragons at the time. Please, don't be like me. Don't leave it to chance. Just go and buy Heroes 3. I might as well talk a bit more about my first experiences with this game because they may mirror your first impressions of this title too. Like most budget games bought in Trago Mills, it was a bit disappointing to load this one up and to realise that it wasn't some magical 3D game filled with dragons, but was instead a dry, low-res, turn-based, stat-heavy game. The first time you load it up, it forces you through a lengthy intro movie, which even back then looked dated and rubbish. I think I felt a bit sorry for the game really, so while my sister was off doing other things on Christmas Day, I booted it up and ground my way through the tutorial. Very soon, I was hooked and its appeal has never worn off. That game's tutorial was a great investment. Well done, younger me. It's sort of like a Total War game, but with turn-based battles represented by a single unit, and with a number next to them to represent how many of that unit it's made up of. But that makes it sound rubbish, doesn't it? And it isn't rubbish, and it's very easy to skip past the bits that you don't like, which I'm going to tell you right now will be none of it. It's all great. Think of it as a world map with cities dotted around. You control heroes who venture into the Shroud and who accumulate resources and armies from the places they visit. Every day your heroes can traverse a certain distance, and you can upgrade one building from each city that you command. Then you end your turn, and you do it all over again. You can do a good job of this without much effort, but take the time to do it perfectly, to visit regenerating resources every week and stuff like that, and you'll be rewarded with the slight edge over your opponents. And that can be immensely satisfying, especially on the harder campaigns. Every week your cities get new troops, so the early game is a decision between economic or military growth, which then gives way to later game map domination. Each new scenario is a world of goodies waiting to be harvested, but you need to get on with it, because somewhere in that shroud, an AI player is doing the exact same thing. And I figure that most missions put you at a disadvantage, meaning that if you wait too long then the AI is going to outgrow and eventually crush you. It's turn-based, but there's still a sense of urgency to it all. All the while you're battling wild animals and the occasional AI army for a tense showdown, with every one of these potentially making or breaking the game. But all this is still underselling the game's appeal. Each city spawns an army of seven different unit types of varying tiers, which is replenished every seven days. You get loads of the weaker units and fewer of the more powerful. At the very top of this hierarchy, and the last to unlock, are the super powerful units. These are the dragons, the devils and the angels and just a handful of these will murder hundreds of the weaker units. Younger gamers will hopefully get as much satisfaction from learning these different characters as I did. I still like to interpret it literally, imagining how a single ballista shot can skewer 60 enemies at once, or the horrific state my dragons must be in after being stabbed by 200 troglodytes several times over, or about how an army can travel all day, then switch armies with another hero who can then get them to travel for another entire day on the same day. It's remarkable that the game can tell such vivid stories from its stat-driven low-res icons. But those pixelated graphics are charming. There have been seven of these games now, so if you think this game's too dated then go ahead and try one of the newer ones. But guess what? I still think this third game is the best looking of the lot. There's just something nice about these 2D graphics that the 3D versions are yet to rival. It's much like how Age of Empires 2 is still great the way it is. And of the Hero series, this third game's graphics are the clearest of the lot and wonderfully diverse and colourful. I still find this game pleasant to look at, even when it is all at 15fps and at a sub HD resolution. The sound effects and music are warm and welcoming, and after a session you'll be well versed in the game's pacing, its battle cues and the new day sound. It's just a really nice gaming experience to boot up a new scenario with the intention of maxing out your hero's levels, or to daringly rush into the enemy territory early on with a half-baked army in the hope of scoring early game victories before the armies get too massive and terrifying to deal with. It's still a bit confusing to me what this game is. Heroes of Might and Magic is not the Heroes TV series, nor is it Might and Magic, which is a separate series a lot like the early Elder Scrolls games in terms of presentation. So now we've established that this is Heroes of Might and Magic, it's on to what's the base game and what's an expansion, since this threw me off for a couple of years as well. Right now, Steam has an HD overhaul version, but apparently it has lots of missing content. Over on GOG is a complete edition, but this excludes the Chronicles campaigns. I'd suggest you start with the complete edition just because it comes with so much stuff, plus World Editor. 
What my mum bought in Trego Mills was one of the Chronicles campaigns called Clash of the Dragons, and it really doesn't have much content other than a single string of missions. But I do like that these Chronicles campaigns are longer than the main game's three level long campaigns, which give you a lot more time to level up and to grow fond of your heroes. And towards the end of these you get some quite interesting unit types. These Chronicle campaigns are also available as a separate bundle over on GOG. I've never been the most patient when presented with walls of text, which this game can sometimes throw at you at the start of a new turn, but the stories this game tells are often very entertaining, or sad, or humorous in one way or another. I recall the chess games my character would always lose against his advisor, or the graphic description of a gravely wounded dragon with no tail, and how I spent so long on these campaigns that the story would eventually stop after a month or so of turns, rudely implying that I was taking longer to beat that mission than it expected me to. One story that sticks with me is a custom scenario about all guys going to war with their girlfriends. Each day starts with hilariously gender-stereotyped snippets as the guys end up lounging about in their pants, wallowing in filth, while the girls spend their time planting flowers and keeping everything neat and tidy. My sister and I used to take turns to play on this one to settle once and for all which gender was better. I have still only just scratched the surface of what this game has to offer. It still has an active Reddit and YouTube community. And from viewing this, it turns out the game's mechanics are a lot more sophisticated than I ever gave them credit for. It's also done that predictable thing of making me realise how rubbish I am at the game. I've always ignored the spells, seeing them as being secondary to the armies themselves, but when I see the overpowered strats that people come up with online, it makes me want to boot up a mission that I've never been able to beat and to try it again. If you learn to like this game, you will get a lot of satisfaction from it. It's a travesty it's taken me 20 years to talk about my love for this game given that the series is still managing to limp on and that the community for this one particular game is still going strong. So hopefully this video can draw more people to this incredible game because it really does deserve playing. For me, I enjoy replaying the campaigns I know I can already beat, as well as occasionally taking a new stab at the ones I haven't managed to beat just yet. And it always makes me want to make a game like it, which is a sign that the game is excellent. I say time and time again that I don't like turn-based games, yet they always turn out to be my favourites. Heroes 3 is the best game I know like it. If young Philip could see past this game's data graphics and nerdy mechanics, then you definitely can too. Most of the bargain games we got from Trego Mills were discarded after just a few disappointing minutes or so, but Heroes 3 is one game that we're still both very fond of. So much so, in fact, that we're both very pleased that we were wrong about our initial assessment of it, that we were disappointed that it wasn't a 3D world filled with dragons. We're both older now. Mum no longer buys us bargain games from Trago Mills, but I think our younger selves would be proud of what we've become. Here I am, still enjoying the game and finding new content for it. And my sister became a full-time streamer, where she has finally got to play in a 3D world filled with dragons.